How to install a CD-ROM on a computer. What you first want to do, I'd recommend go ahead and turn off your computer. Let's see if I can wake mine up. Let's go ahead, mine don't. Go ahead and just shut it off. I would recommend doing that. All right, and wait till the power light on here goes off. I'll go ahead and just move it so we can get ready. This step, it may take a little bit of a process. So after you've done that, go and slide out to your little, I guess they call it a monitor or tower, one of those, whatever they call it. And what you wanna do, you got the little door right here. You know, on the, uh, if you're looking at it, either on the left side or right side, depending on what your computer is, this is a Dell. No, not the Dell Singer, the Dell computer. So what I did, mine had screws on it, but it's been repaired before I'm, I just left the screws out. So there's on here, just a little pull handle. You just pull kind of firmly onto it. And it'll slide off. You can kind of see where the grooves at, where it slides onto. So after you've done that, you're gonna take the door off. You got all the nice electrical stuff in here. I already have a CD-ROM in here. But I want to add another one. This one's able to have two CD-ROMs, so got one up here. Doesn't work too well because it won't open up when you want it to. And you got a little area for right here. So I'm going to add on to it. So for this one here, I got to take the little faceplate off of it. And to do that, I got the little tabs here. You just want to pull those outwards while pushing out onto the face of it, just like so. And it just kind of opens up almost like a door and it'll just come off. So just set that off to the side. And here, got the little thing I put. There's some screws here. Yours may be rivets. Just depends what it is. You want to go ahead and take the screws off of it and this plate will come off. Well, on mine it is. Yours, like I said, may be a rivet on it. Just depends. Alright, so I went on and removed the screws for this plating here. Now what you want to do, I believe you just want to go ahead and just slide it just right on in. See something fall. And you got these two holes where the screw holes just like that would line up with it. So what you want to do, just kind of move it back and forth until you get to the holes right here. Then you want to find some screws. I'm going to see if these screws that was on the plating that cover this up will fit onto it. If not, you need to find some kind of smaller type of screw like this. You don't want to go have like a pretty long screws where it goes into and uh, hits the circuit board of the CD-ROM of it. So you just want the small ones just enough to screw into it and hold it in place. Alright, I just got, I don't got it in there all the way. So I just got just enough where it holds the CD-ROM in place and therefore I can close the door. I'm not too worried about having this snug up tight. You can see it's got some room into it. But you want to make sure you got the right screws. You technic technically not the right screws for it. So that's why it won't go in there all the way. So after you got it in there, you want to look at it, make sure it's facing the right way. You got the button down here. And that's same thing with that. The button's over here. So it's the same way. So after you've done that, Mine came with the, the connectors onto it, but unfortunately one of them is not the right one for it. So all this does is follow where your other one is right here. You got one here. Well, I don't need a connector actually, because I got one of these. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So like I was saying, you want to, sorry for all the movements. Follow. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug this one here. So... This is for the top one here. You can switch it around if you want, it doesn't matter. But where this one's plugged at is right up here. Dell's nice enough to give you another port to add on to this one, so. I'll need to see, maybe the other one's longer for it, I believe so. This looks like for a hard drive. I was told it was for a CD-ROM, so. Let's go ahead and switch it out, I believe, compared to it. This one's longer. So, I'll have this one, I'll just unplug the the top one foot just so we know this bottom one here works on it so go ahead and just plug in the thing 
It is coated. I don't know if you'd be able to see that way. At the right side, it's got like a little bigger hole of it. So you want to find the one that has that one. And you may have to turn it around or so. It might fit in there nicely. Same thing with this one here. It's coated where it will only work one way. So you either make it in there the first time. Yep. Well, you have to turn it around for it. So, okay, so this is plugged in. What you want to do, the reason why I say you want to turn it off, when you turn it back on, see if I can push the button on it here. You want to make sure it installs the software onto it. All right, I got my computer booted up. And to find out if your software is already installed, it should as soon as you turn on the computer. What you want to do is go to, on yours, this is a Windows 10, so yours, you got like a 7, it may be a little bit different. But for this one here, you want to go to this PC, click there, then you got the hard drive, you got another little, uh, I guess it's another memory thing for a hard drive or something. Then you got your uh, CD-ROM, so what I like to do, double click it. And it opens up. Going to click close, push the button here, and it works. So I'll show you that the top one also works too. It may install another software. Not for sure. This was just for the bottom one here. So like I said, same thing. Plug in the cable for the top one. And since Dale was nice enough to give us another connected to it, going to connect the one of these extras here on top of this one. All right, I got the top one connected, as you can see. So you may have to restart it, so it may pull up another one like this one here. Let's see if I can get the mouse to respawn, probably not, but you should see another one just like that, probably over here, I wanna say. And if you click on that, it should open up this top one here. That's the reason why. If you can hear it, but it doesn't want to open up sometimes. Kind of got to give it a little good firm punch to it almost. Foot, and you see the bottom one. Works just as good. So let's go ahead and try to restart it. Maybe see if it... Yeah. Alright, so... Computer froze up. I was able to restart it. So, like I was saying, it pulls up two of them, so it recognized two of them. So, what I'm gonna end up doing is relabel them if it will let me. Let's see. If I probably change it, probably. I don't know if it'll let me. I'll have to figure it out because that's kind of confusing the way they have it. E and F. Well, which one's E and F? You got a top one and the bottom one. So the one, probably the way I'll think of it, maybe I'll even, maybe label it on the door. I'm going to put the cover back on, F and E. So to find out which one's what, double click it. And the bottom one opens up. So the bottom one's F. E will be the top one. And you see why I needed to replace it, because it ain't one to open up to give it a good couple hit so. all right so I'll figure that out later on how to rename it so I know which one is which so that's how you install the CD uh, ROM on the computer put everything all back it's basically vice versa like I said these door two doors here right where the lights at I'll label which is which what so I know when I need to put a CD in it or whatnot. So there should be grooves over here. I don't know if you'll be able to see that one. Three grooves. One right here. Leave that one here. Got one up here. And that just fits right into here, I believe, right to here. So kind of kind of the way it took off, kind of goes into sideways. Kind of like a hook. So you want to put it in the sideways. And make sure you push up against it so it stays in place. Alright, so I got mine little hooks in place. After you got it in there, make sure 
I'll have to slide this out a little bit so it can close. And you want to make sure the bottom of it in place of it and just go ahead and give a good firm push. That one works. There you go. Yeah, that may get stuck. Yeah, I have to probably do something with that on it. It's not a tip over the computer. Then after you did that, I don't need that cable anymore. Probably save it for something else. If the hard drive goes out, looks like it'd be for a hard drive because it's blue also. Hey, that's another thought too. You had a second hard drive on it. Got any option about that? Let me know if I should do that or not. Had a second hard drive onto it. So after you get that all installed, make sure you put the little cover back on. Basically vice versa. Kind of same thing like the front of it. It's got little grooves on it. That you want to line up into the bigger hole over here and slide push towards the front of the computer. I don't know if I'll be able to do that one handed, maybe so. Also I believe you got tabs over here, maybe. No, nope, I believe not. And you just give it a good kind of firm push. Up against that and if yours had screws in it, go ahead and put the screws on it. And just tighten down. I don't see the point of that. Nobody's gonna get in here and gut out my computer that I know of. So just push it back in and you're all set to go. That's how you replace a CD-ROM on a computer. Thanks for watching.